but for some reason that trained you and you came back to that. Is that is that kind of how it went? Because I would it, think you might want to resent might resent that. You know, that's funny that you would say that because I actually find joy in food and uh -huh. being creative is it's my artistic side. Yes. yes. So after um when I moved away from home and then I moved back to the town that I moved away from and back again, I actually utilized my food skills to try to keep my, my older brothers together to have family dinners. And so oh. I enjoyed seeing the pleasure and bringing the family that was left in that town together. And I just saw people enjoying that. And when I could create stuff and make stuff up and it worked, that was always a really great thing for me. So I never really, re I resented it as a child. I hated it, but I enjoy it as an adult because it's, I it's my creative side. Yeah, I love that too. And and I find that, I, I, I'm not a, a chef, of course, like you, but I find that after I've been with a lot of people, sometimes one of the releases for me is to get in the kitchen and create something. Yes. And I love what you said there because you would go back and you wanted for your brothers to feel that community. Because I love the idea of sitting down because I think it provides community that sometimes gets lost nowadays. So that, that was a beautiful way to put it. Um, and, then it and then it's that nourishment. It's not only nourishment for the heart, for, for the body, but it's also a nourishment for the heart, isn't it? It is. It yeah. is. And there's joy in it. There's joy watching people eat, and there's joy having community, and it's just wonderful. Yeah, I love it, too. And you know what? I have gone on, um, so out, out there, you, you audience, you have to go on and see Rhonda in the kitchen on her uh, website because I've watched her on the, and I, and I almost want to, you know, just go through my computer screen and be there with you because <laughs> <laughs> because it's in the creation of it that is so fascinating to me. So now, um, then you learned about the chickens. So now you are a, a vegan. So explain to the audience what, what's the difference between, a, a and you're also into raw food. So explain to the audience, I've been to raw, I, I eat meat, but I've been to also to raw food restaurants, and I actually quite enjoyed them. So explain to the audience um, what vegan means and um, a raw food diet. Sure. So vegan is absolutely zero animal products. And people are like, well, how can you even do that? I mean, come on. I, I got to have my bacon oh, no, and I need my cheese. <laughs> And I, and you know, I concur. If that's what you love, let me see if I can remake that for you and see how you like it. And people are like, oh, okay, let's see if you can do it. And so I'll recreate something that they are so loving that they love what I just recreated. And people can eat vegan without all of the animal products so simply. But the trick now, and I just want to put a plug in for what's happening in America, and I don't even know if it's the whole world, but certainly in America that they're creating fake foods, which um, I'm not even a big fan of the fake foods, if that helps you out at any, because mm -hmm. you can go like to the freezer section and find fake burger and fake chicken and fake mm -hmm. pork ribs or whatever, and it's all chemically weird food. Right, right. But you can make food from scratch and recreate it. Like I made a cauliflower turkey for Thanksgiving and I didn't have to go get a tofurkey, which is a fake <laughs> whatever it is, but I was able to create the flavors of a Thanksgiving turkey and then put that over a cauliflower and bake it and then bring it out, cut a V in it and use the parts that I cut out and put that in as the legs and then fill it full of stuffing and people oh. love it. And they're like, oh my gosh. I mean, I've done cooking classes where people are like, this is so delicious. And it's like, well, of course. But we I know. I can picture the legs. That That is like Yeah, creative. you just cut it out and then poke them on. It looks like a turkey. <laughs> so you can fake it and make it delicious without using 
the, the chemical laden foods, hot wings, you can do the same thing with cauliflower. It's very diverse. You could take tofu and make egg salad out of it or eggs out of it. I mean, there's so many different things that can be done vegan wise where you're not having to go get this stuff out of the freezer and people are like, what is this rubber biscuit? But I make burgers out of oatmeal and sun-dried um, tomatoes. I mean, there's just so many different creative ways to make food. And right. you can make it in advance so that it's in your freezer. So you still have it. As right. far as raw foods, that is the toughest thing you could possibly get into. I went to raw culinary school and learned all the tricks of the trades and how to make stuff to where you think it was cooked and done, but it's not. And that the flavor balance is intense and amazing. And you can make bread and crackers in a dehydrator. And as long as it's not a, over 118 degrees, it's still considered raw. So you can dehydrate coconuts and make coconut bacon. Or you, I mean, there's so many different ways of doing that. That's it's amazing. Food is really amazing. Yeah, yeah. That now. So how long have you been vegan? Uh, since about 2004. Okay. And how I got into that was mm -hmm. um, I became a Seventh-day Adventist and they're really into the health message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I started studying it and I made stuff that was more vegetarian than vegan. And they're like, ah, oh, this has cheese in it. I'm like, oh, what did I do wrong? Oh no. And so I started really creating and changing things out. But they were doing stuff like the fake foods and I'm like, that doesn't even taste right. So I would just continue to create until I created something amazing. And then I would watch at a potluck and people were like, who made this? This is fabulous. And I'm like, yeah, it's not that weird food. <laughs> <laughs> no. And, and see that, see, it's one thing to be vegan, but then to, then sometimes people still are eating bad is what you're saying because they're using some of that fake food, but you believe in eating a uh, vegan but making it as back to natural or, yes. or from scratch. Yeah. Back, back to nature and from scratch. I really love farm to table. Mm -hmm. And in our next segment, I, and when I um, talk about that, you will be like, wow, this is crazy. But when you can grow something and then pluck it and then eat it, it is so intense that it is so different. People are like, what is that? It's like, well, I grew that. Is the flavor different? It is because it's not mass produced. Right, right. And it's so, yeah, it's amazing. You know what? It, it's hard to believe, but we're almost out of time. So I want um, you to tell the audience how they can get a hold of you. And then we're, uh, the good news is Rhonda is coming back next week. And so we're going to get further into this because. This, this is a subject that I love to talk about because it's community, it's family, it brings people together, but yet you are bringing the healthy spin on it, which we all need. So um, tell the audience how they can get a hold of you and um, uh, about the drawing. I think we talked about a drawing, so that's exciting. Perfect, yes. Uh, my number is 602-320-0100. Again, 602-320-0100. My website is rondelicious.com, and it's R-A-W, like the word raw, N as in Nancy, D as in David, A-L-I-C-I-O-U-S.com. R A W N D A licious L I C I O U S dot com. And you can also email me at gourmet at rondelicious dot com. That's G O U R M E T at rondelicious R A W N D A L I C I O U S dot com. Please, I'm going to have a drawing for a cookbook. My cookbook is amazing. It stands up. It's got a bunch of QR codes in it, which you click on that on your device. I come alive like I'm sitting there right with you on your device oh in your kitchen creating <laughs> that recipe with you. I would love to give that to you. So if you could please just give me an, a text message or email, let me know who you are, put you in the drawing. I'm happy to give that away. Love to connect with you. Please give me a call, 602-320-0100, or go ahead and email me at gourmet at rondelicious.com. 
Hey, sounds wonderful. And that number I called this morning and she is there when you call. So, <laughs> yay, Rhonda. Hey, Rhonda, you know, in listening to your story about how you were adopted, I have one question to close with. What do you believe is the single most important character quality that produces resilience? Because I see that you were resilient to get through all those years when you were you were cooking for peop, uh, 10 people at one point at eight years old. I, that's just amazing. So what what is the quality that produces resilience? I just think inside of person is that there's more to life than looking at the gloom and doom, always looking forward to something better and producing the best thing that you can produce to make people happy. It's love. It's love. It is love for sure. Well, thank you for coming in and we'll see you back next week, Rhonda. I am so excited to talk to you again. And remember, audience, it is never too late. It's never too late to get healthy. It is never too late to lose weight, to follow your dreams. It is never too, too late to live a life of purpose. It is just never too late ever. We're rooting for you, and we'll see you back here next week. Bye, Rhonda. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. I appreciate all that you do. Blessings. Thank you, Rhonda. Bye-bye.